welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I've got another tutorial here for you. Um, so hopefully you've been so, uh, following along or maybe you have or haven't um, or maybe you're just wanting this tutorial for another project which is great which is why I'm doing it separately. <laughs> um, but we I've been doing a sew along for pattern B6641 which is this blazer and I have I'll pop it up here <laughs> and I have been um, pulling out some of the harder techniques to hopefully explain them as well as I can with some tutorials. So um, today is the welt pocket tutorial and it is a welt pocket with a flap, fully functional. I've got the jacket here. Um, so yeah, so we are doing this welt pocket with the flap. Um, again, I kind of mentioned it before, but um, I don't always do welt pockets this way. Um, and I, there's not a lot of variation in, in a different way that I might do it. Um, Mimi G has an excellent one for her uh, 8749 pattern, Simplicity 8749, um, her jacket pattern, that it's just been drafted different. And I actually kind of like that one better because you're actually sewing through the pocket facing as well for your box as opposed to having them butt up against one another. Just gives it, makes it a little more stable around that area that you've cut. Um, but again, I just used the pattern pieces and the, the way it was drafted um, and then kind of went off of that. So this is definitely a way that you can use for any pattern that has a um, welt pocket or even if you had these pattern pieces and wanted to put a welt pocket on anything else, you could easily do that um, with the flap. <coughs> Excuse me. So I hope you find the tutorial helpful. Leave me any questions that you might have below. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We've got a whole bunch of fun stuff coming up on the channel, um, including a lot more tutorials. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Leave me any questions and give me a thumbs up if you like this. And I will see you next time. Bye. Okay, guys, we're going to do a welt pocket today. Yay. Um, I'm using Butterick 6641 for this tutorial. Now, I want to preface this really quick and say that there are a few different ways that you can do welt pockets. Um, I You have to follow the pattern to a certain extent just because the pattern pieces have been drafted a certain way for a certain way that you are going to be um, sewing them in. Now, that being said, I'm not actually following the directions on this pattern. I'm going a little off kilter. I'm kind of mashing a couple of different welt pocket tutorials together that um, I've done and liked in order to make this one work um, a way that I like. So first things first, we have our jacket front, which is under here, and you're gonna need to move all of your markings to the front. So you can see here, now of course you can totally use tailor's tacks. I've used a friction pen that will erase with heat. And these were all marks that I had on the back side of the pattern. I've just moved it to the front. You will need it on the front side for your jacket front. You'll need it on the front side of the welt, which in this pattern is piece eight. And you will need it on the front side of your pocket flap, which I've already done, which is piece seven for this pattern. Now on your ah, actual pocket and lining pieces, you can just leave the marks on the back like normal because um, you'll actually be sewing that from the back. So go ahead and mark your pieces and then um, I want you to press this. Clearly I'm doing this on one side. You'll want to do it on two when all is said and done, but we're just going to do, I'll just show you on one side. It's the same on both. So we're just going to take this and fold this together and um, press this wrong sides together. That's all we're going to do on that one. Be careful that you don't accidentally erase your um, friction marks or draw those back in when you're done. And then you're going to see me um, folding this piece in half and I'm going to sew 5 eighths of an inch on either short side and then you'll see me clip and then um, yeah then we'll go and I'll take you to the pressing board and show you how I'm going to turn that and then we'll also press this. Okay. Okay so like I said this is my pocket flap which is piece 7 on Butterick 6641 and I'm just going to sew the short ends at 5 eighths. Now I'm just going to kind of clip at an angle and just trim these to like a quarter of an inch. Well, 
All right, now I'm gonna take you over and we're gonna actually press these open and I'm gonna show you how I use a tailor's um, point to do that. All right, so this is a tailor's point here and um, not a necessary, completely necessary tool for sewing, but if you do a lot of tailoring, I highly recommend. And all I'm going to do, the way this works, this point here works, is I'm just opening up this flap, sticking it onto this point, and then it allows me to press those open, which gives a nice, crisp pocket flap. So then I'm just going to stick my thumbs in and turn. You could definitely use a point turner or point, yeah, point turner to turn those if you want. Um, I have a very loose weave fabric and I am worried about poking a hole through it. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to move this so you can see. I'm just going to kind of go with it not, I mean you could work with it a little bit. I'm not a perfectionist though, so I'm just going as is. Then just give it a good press. And then my welt is right here. I'm just wrong sides together. It's just getting pressed. It's not getting sewn at all right now. And you'll notice I just erased my marks. That's okay. I can go back and put those in. So now we're going to go sew everything to the jacket. And next time we come back here, we'll just be pressing everything into submission at the end. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready to sew all of our pieces on trying not to hit the camera here. Okay, so again, I have marked my dots, and can you kind of see? I've marked my dots from the back with a friction pen. Now, I want to note, on this pattern, I shortened this by two inches, and that has made this very narrow in between this dart and this side seam, and that is, I don't think it's the pattern. I think it's because I shortened it um, at the lengthen and shorten line, but it brought things up um, which I need for my body, but it's narrower here um, where it wouldn't be if you didn't shorten the pattern. So I'm just having to kind of finagle and make this work. But that if you notice a really small seam allowance when all is said and done over here, I'm going to make it work when I sew the side seams. But um, that's why. That is not typical to the pattern. It's just because I shortened it. But I also want to note, on this pattern, there is a dart right here. You want to be very careful that you don't accidentally sew your box into the dart. Um, you can see we're going to sew literally right up to it, but we've pressed our dart away from it, so we should be fine when we're cutting at the very end, okay? So first things first, we're going to do a whole lot of basting. So I'm going to take my machine to a five, and I'm going to turn off my back stitch, back stitch function. So um, basically, if we get a little sloppy here, we can just pull all those stitches out, and it nothing is worse for wear. Okay. So we've got the top of our pattern, oops, these stupid lining pieces like to fly. Okay, top of our pattern is here, bottom of our pattern is here. We're going to take our welt, and it's just been pressed, it's not been sewn at all, and I am going to, this is one of the times I actually use pens, but I'm going to put my pen through the dot there, and then put it through the dot on the pattern. Pin it in place on both sides. And again, mine is a tight fit. Hopefully you guys are not experiencing that because I I do think it goes right up to the start, but you got to be careful. All right, so I have my dots matched to the dots on the pattern. So I'm just going to go with my basting stitch. Just going to sink this in right where that dot is. Move my pen, because I don't want to sew over it. And I put that at an odd angle, of course. All right. Now, you could also, if it helps, you could go ahead and use your friction pen and draw a line to connect your two dots. If that helps you sew a straight line, that is absolutely fine. It will erase. I mean, you want to test on your fabric to make sure, but chances are it will erase. Um, I've never had an issue with it. I know some people have going into the cold that things will reappear, but I've never had an issue. So um, I may have just jinxed myself, but there you go. So now we are going to, we're basically sewing at five eighths of an inch. Again, I can pretty good at eyeballing five eighths of an inch just because I've been sewing so much, but I'm going to be very careful when I get to this end that I do not hit that dart. Okay, so that's basted on. 
Now, I'm going to find my scissors, which of course I left over here. Sorry, you're going to see me dodging in front of the camera. Okay, now we're going to go back. So this is the folded edge here. And this is the um, raw edge here. And we're just going to very carefully trim this down to about a quarter of an inch. We're going to ignore that phone too, I apologize. <laughs> down to a quarter of an inch all the way across, approximately. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just kind of want things to stay in place. All right, now with our flap, right sides to right sides, although the flap looks the same on both sides. If there's one side you like better than the other, then make sure it's facing down. But basically, again, here's the top, and here's our flap. And we're going to, your flap raw edge is gonna overlap the welt right now, and that's okay, because it's gonna get trimmed too. But we're just going to match our dots again to each other. So matching the dots very carefully. All right, same thing. We're going to baste again. So we're going to I need to remember to put that in and get it out easier. Okay, we're basically basting at 5 eighths of an inch again. Be very careful not to catch that dart. <laughs> And actually, I'm over that dart. So, this is the beauty of the baste. This is one of the only times you will find me basting. Sometimes layers shift. And I'm in such tight quarters here. I'm actually gonna flip this around and I'm gonna start, I think, over here to make sure I Stay right on that dot. And don't encringe upon my dart. Oops. You gotta keep it down. All right, we're all lined up. And again, if you wanna draw yourself a line, that is fine. Okay. So again, we're going to trim this very carefully. Make sure you're not cutting anything you're not supposed to. We are just cutting the pocket flap down to a quarter of an inch, which I'm having a hard time seeing my stitching line because it, there it is, matches so well. <laughs> All right. Also, a little word to the wise. If it feels like you're cutting through too many layers of fabric, you probably are. So <laughs> stop make sure you are cutting what you're supposed to cut. Okay, we're gonna continue with basting. Now on this pattern piece, and I'm gonna show you, it has you cut out um, the whole piece in your fabric and then just the lining from this line down, and it has two sets of markings. Well, I've already done one pocket on this jacket, and so the top one is for the actual fabric pocket piece, and the bottom one is where I'm marking my lining piece, and that seems to line up perfectly. So, it does not say that on the pattern, but that's what I'm doing. So you'll see I have both marked on this because I had not figured that out yet, but top one for this one. So basically, we're just going to do the same thing. We're just basting that, and, oh, sorry. Fabric pocket is going on top, right sides together on top of the flap. Okay, so we've got the top of the jacket, bottom of the jacket. Here's my flap pointing up. Well, now this is going to point up too. So I'm just going to take this, I guess looking at it this way, it's the bottom hole. But if you're looking at it right way up, it's the top. And we're just going to match our dots again. Now this will go over the dart, um, this extra, and that's okay.
All right. And again, if you wanted to bait or um, draw your line in, which I actually did on my pocket piece, you totally can do that. Oh, I've got to quit pinning like that. All right. So we're just going to sink it into the dot. We're still basting, still a basting stitch. All right. So again, five eighths of an inch. You can draw it in if you'd like. Okay. Now we're going to trim this down to a quarter of an inch. This would be so much easier if they just had these drafted at a quarter of an inch, but that's okay. <laughs> we're making do. All right, and then you've got your lining piece. Again, it will overlap this momentarily, but you're right. We're going to baste it and then trim it to a quarter of an inch. So just make sure, and again, I marked my line on this one, but we're just going to make sure that everything's lined up here. All right. So we're going to baste again, sink that needle in, and I've got a line here to follow this time, although it's just five eighths of an inch, so. All right, so now again, we're going to, you guessed it, trim this. All right, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like before we do any fancy stuff. <laughs> All right, so you have your jacket front. You've got your welt, so your fold is, is hanging down, the raw edge is up. Your lining pocket is right, you can't hardly tell because the right and the wrong side look the same, but it's right sides together, so this is the right side under here, face to the right side of the jacket, basted down and trimmed. Then under here, you've got your flap that is up, the folded edge is up, and the raw edge is down, and then your um, pocket piece of right of fabric is right sides together with the bottom of it up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to a short stitch length, so two and a half. Some people even go down to like a two when you're doing welt pocket just to keep it even more secure. And I'm just going to follow my basting stitches. And be very careful, again, not to hit my dart, <laughs> but to hit those dots that I have marked on my um, pieces. And I'm going to start in the middle of one of the long rows, just because it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to sew down to the dot. I'm going to count how many stitches it takes me to get from this dot to this dot, because I want that to be the same on the other end. Oops. And you want a back stitch. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're getting to our dot. We're gonna stop, pick it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> nine stitches. So I'm gonna pivot again. So down, hit this dot. Nine stitches, wait, not quite there yet. <laughs> All right, nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> and then back this way to where I started. And back stitch again. Okay, so we've sewn a box basically around there. Now this is the scary part, <laughs> not really. You're gonna wanna peel back all of your seam allowances because we're just gonna cut through the front of the jacket. And I just take a pinch to get that started so that I can get my, my scissor in there. And you're gonna cut until about a half an inch to the end of that box. And then you're gonna cut diagonally, very carefully, to, not through, your corners. And sometimes you gotta get a little
muscly there. And you will cut through seam allowances when you go through the boxes. That's fine. Again, make sure you're only cutting through what you want to cut through. So here we go. We are cutting just through the jacket front till about a half an inch. Then we're going to cut into our corners. Got a lot of layers going through that one. All right. Now we have a hole in your coat, which can be scary. But now I'm going to take you over to the um, ironing board and I'm going to show you how to iron this into submission, which is not hard again. And then I'm going to show you exactly where we're going to stitch for the final stop. Okay, so here's how I sewed everything. I've not touched anything yet. We're going to push everything to the inside. So we can start by pushing our lining to the inside now when we get to these pieces, you're going to kind of tuck those extra seam allowances in. Just kind of, again, you're just going to cut again. I've got very small seam allowances over here, and that is, again, because I think of how I did that. All right, so you're going to tuck that. Then you're going to tuck this in, and this is actually not going to, it's just going to tuck in, and that is going to go down. So, in theory, that's what everything's going to look like at the end. Let's turn it to the back, and you can really see what's going on. All right, so we have our pocket bag that's going to be going down. We want to make sure we get all those corners nice and pulled through, and if you feel like you need to clip a little more, that's fine. It's going to be super bulky at these corners, but you're just going to want to make sure Everything is lying as it should. Okay, so we're going to go through the layers. We've got our bag, our, our fabric pocket is laying like this, and it kind of will have like a little notch here at the top, just from where it's turned. You're going to lift that up, and we've got our, you can kind of see the flap right here. It's just pulling down. You're fine. Our welt is going to pull all the way in. So see, there it is, and we want all those long ends in. And then our lining is going down. So does that layering make sense? So now you can kind of flanagle it. And now our pocket and our, um, our two pocket pieces should match. So now, and I managed to not hit my dart, so yay. <laughs> we are just going to press the living daylights out of this pocket. First from the back. It's also real unfortunate that this um, got so tight here because I've got very fray fabric, but that's also why I interfaced it, so. All right, now, a good press. Again, you should use a press cloth. Oops, so you wanna make sure everything's lying flat under there so you don't accidentally sew wrinkles into anything. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the sewing machine I'm going to pull this back here, pull this dart back. You will have a little triangle here that is that part that you cut out. What you're going to do is you're going to sew, careful not to catch your dart, pull it out of the way. You're going to sew down here, all the way around, pulling the top out of the way, all the way around, keep pulling your, the top out of the way, all the way around and up to the other side. Again, hopefully you have more seam allowance than I do. Pull that seam allowance out of the way. Can you see that okay? Out of the way and you're gonna sew up through here, sewing that little triangle down. And then that's it, you've got a welt pocket. So I'm gonna go do that and then we'll be finished. Okay, so again, we're just gonna pull this out of the way. The front of the jacket, I have the teeniest seam allowance, which is gonna be real unfortunate when I have to sew my side seams, but again. Okay, we're gonna pull that out of the way and we're sewing all these layers down. Sometimes you accidentally unthread your machine, which I've already done once in this sew along. Okay. 
Again, we're sewing at uh, five eighths of an inch. And if you, if this gets kind of skewed in the pocket, it's fine. You're never going to see it because it's going to be covered up by lining. So again, I'm just pulling this top layer out of the way. And I'm going to make sure that my dart and the front of my coat are out of the way here. But you want to get kind of, oops, kind of close. Okay, so back of the coat. You've sewn just the pocket pieces all the way around to the other side. Now, you can go through and clip. I mean, you don't want to clip too much, but clip some of that bulk out. It's just going to lie a lot flatter. And especially on this side for me, because I'm going to need that cut away so I can sew my side seam. All right. <laughs> just pack at it with scissors. All right. And there you go. There's the back of the pocket. There's the front of the pocket. You've got your welt and everything fits in there nicely and I'm going to have one heck of a time sewing my side seams, but that's okay. So do the same for the other side of the coat and then we're ready to move on with putting the jacket together um, at our next lesson. Thanks guys.